This question says, use the observations about the chemical reaction in the table to decide the sign, positive or negative, of the reaction enthalpy and the reaction enthalpy. And it says you may not always be given enough information, so therefore you can put a note. So to do this, I want to first look at this table and talk our way through it before we actually try to answer this question. So remember that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's look at all these cases. So we're looking at the sine of delta H and the sine of delta S. Remember, if delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. If delta G is positive, then the reaction is not spontaneous, or you could also say the reverse reaction is spontaneous. So let's look at this. If delta H is positive, then this side will be positive. If delta S is positive, then this part will be negative right because it's a subtract so if this is positive and this is negative this part of the equation has to be greater well what's going to make this greater if temperature is high so for delta g to overall be negative when they're both positive it's spontaneous at high temperatures because this negative part will be a greater number at high temperatures than at low temperatures so if they're both positive it's spontaneous at high temperature only let's look at the next example if delta H is positive and delta S is negative, so T delta S will be positive, positive plus a positive um, is going to be positive. This will never be spontaneous. So if delta H is positive and delta S is negative, the reaction is never spontaneous. Let's look at the next case. If delta H is negative and delta S is positive, this will be negative and it'll be minus a positive. So it'll be a negative minus a positive, which will always be negative. This is gonna be spontaneous at all temperatures. It's independent of the temperature. And then finally, if you have a negative delta H and a negative delta S, this is negative. This will be um, a negative times a negative, which will make this positive. So we want this term to be as low as possible. Well, when is this gonna be low, as low as possible in order for the reaction to be spontaneous? at low temperatures. So you can use this table and just think about the math that's going on with this in order to determine um, you know, what goes on based on the sides plus and minus, plus, or excuse me, plus and plus, plus and minus, minus and plus, and minus and minus. That's basically how it works. The last thing that I wanna mention because it's in the problem is the rate of the reaction is not part of this. Kinetics and thermodynamics are separate things. So the rate of the reaction doesn't have anything to do with um, the delta G value. Uh, so we can ignore it when it's given in these problems. Let's look at this, questions. It says, um, the reverse of this reaction is always spontaneous, but proceeds faster at temperatures above 126 degrees C. So the proceeds faster part, that's the kinetics, we can ignore it. This is the reverse of this reaction is always spontaneous. Well, if the reverse of the reaction is always spontaneous, the reaction itself is never spontaneous. When is it negative, never spontaneous? When delta H is a positive number and delta S is a negative number because then you have a positive plus a positive and therefore it's never spontaneous. So this is plus and this is minus. The reaction is always spontaneous, but proceeds faster at temperatures above five degrees C. Again, we have something about the kinetics or the rate of the reaction and its effect on temperature. We can ignore that. The reaction is always spontaneous. Well, if the reaction is always spontaneous, delta H has to be negative and delta S has to be positive. So this is negative and positive, and you'll notice it's the exact opposite of when it's never spontaneous. Finally, the reaction is exothermic and proceeds slower at temperatures below three degrees. Again, we have something about the rate. We can ignore that. The reaction is exothermic. Well, by definition, an exothermic reaction has a negative delta H. That's what exothermic means. Delta H is negative. However, when it comes to delta S, there, this doesn't tell us anything about delta S because it doesn't tell us anything about the spontaneity of the reaction. It only tells us that the reaction is exothermic. So we only know about delta H. We don't know about delta G, so we can't predict anything about delta S. So this, I'm going to put a question mark, but I think in the, pick bo or the 
the drop down box you have to choose unknown as the potential answer so this is a way you can think your way through these uh, particular problems um, using this table which is given in the help section um, or the explanation section of the question